Assalamu alaikum and bismillah rahman rahim we are here with a new topic and the topic is making a peripheral blood smear uh, it's a very simple and uh, interesting topic and uh, in this topic or in this lecture we have focus on its advantages and disadvantages and uh, where we are doing our cell morphology uh, like uh, a peripheral smear has uh, three parts uh, these are uh, body tail in its mid so where we are going to count the uh, TLC and uh, uh, in continuation with this lecture uh, other lecture will be on a DLC that is differential leukocyte count my name is Tanvir Tara and I am lecturer at Sarah University of Science and Information Technology so let's start Examining a properly prepared and stained blood film constitutes the most important investigation in hematology and uh, these investigations are very helpful for the diagnosis of any disease. Uh, like first uh, we are performing uh, the peripheral smear for differential leukocyte count uh, that's simply known as DLC and uh, then we are performing it for the general assessment and verification of various cell counts. Uh, similarly study of RBC morphology uh, for classifying various anemias like microcytic anemias or uh, macrocytic anemias or hemolytic anemias etc and uh, study of WBC morphology for the diagnosing of uh, leukemias and uh, other WBC disorders uh, like uh, the classification of leukemias that are fair classification uh, like M0, M1, M2. We are looking for blast, promyelocytes, immature cell. We are looking for lift shift. And uh, in WBC disorder, we are looking for the toxic granulation, etc. Bulgar heat anomaly or elder's rally anomaly. Uh, such types of investigations are very helpful. And these investigations are made by the peripheral smears. And uh, study of uh, the platelet morphology uh, for the diagnosis of some platelet disorder uh, like uh, we are looking for the giant platelets or uh, we are looking for the pseudothrombocytopenia. So uh, peripheral smear are very important uh, for the diagnosis of these uh, type of uh, disease. Uh, then we are looking for the um, some parasites uh, like malaria is very common and uh, we are making a smear for the malaria as well. Uh, similarly, uh, study of other defects like roller formation, agglutination, fragmentations, red blood cells inclusion. Uh, WBC inclusion, platelet clumps and uh, satellism of platelets etc. These are the most important thing for which we are making a smear and uh, doing the smear or making a smear it's uh, a uh, diagnostic uh, tool for the diagnosis of any sort of anemia or leukocytosis or thrombocytopenias. So we are looking for these types of disease. Blood films can be made on uh, two different uh, methods. One is called uh, cover slip method and the other one is glass slide method. Where the cover slip method is not very common. And uh, although a cover slip method provide uh, superior or best or even distribu WBC distribution, but it is not preferred because of some disadvantages. We will discuss it in the other slide. And uh, what is glass slide technique? And uh, the glass slide uh, technique is the most common technique of blood smear preparation. And uh, this is called the wedge or uh, also called push technique. So usually we are using the glass uh, slide technique which is also known as wedge technique and it's very common in all the laboratories. So here we have some disadvantages of the cover slip method and because of these disadvantages we are not uh, acknowledging cover slip method is the best uh, peripheral smear uh, for the hematological disorders or for hematological smears. Uh, the first one is difficult to prepare uh, because of its fragility and small size of cover slip. And uh, the second one is cover slips are difficult to handle, clean and label. This is a very difficult task. The third one is platelets are unevenly distributed between two cover slips. And uh, the fourth one is there are non-specific areas to be examined. So that's why cover slip is not best uh, smear or uh, it's not a best technique for uh, microscopy of uh, a peripheral smear.
So which technique or uh, blood films that are prepared on glass slides are preferred because it has a lot of advantages. But few of them are, uh, the first one is they are easy to prepare. And the second one is pre-clean slides are available all the time. Uh, the third one is its handling and labeling is very easy and uh, the fourth and the most important is it is easy to find abnormal cells as these tends to collect at the tail and on edge of the film. So these slides uh, are very preferable and that's why we are using these techniques in all the laboratories. So uh, keeping in mind that uh, which technique is very preferable but it also has some disadvantages and students of hematology uh, you must know the disadvantages of uh, the wedge technique or slide technique and uh, the first one that uh, whenever we are making a peripheral smear on a glass slide so there is chances of greater trauma to the cells and uh, the second one is the un even distribution of white blood cells uh, and which tends to collect at the tail. So these are the few disadvantages due to which uh, peripheral smear on the slide are not preferable. But we do not have any other method for this and uh, still we are performing all the peripheral morphology, WBCs, RBCs and platelet disorders uh, through the peripheral smear on the glass slides. These are the very few requirements for making a wedge slide or uh, making a slide on uh, uh, making a peripheral smear on a glass slide. So the first we need a pre-cleaned uh, glass slide for microscopy and uh, these glass slide should be cleaned from grease, uh, dust or any lint free. And uh, the second thing we need is spreader and uh, a spreader is also a piece of glass. Uh, it might be a covered slip or it may be a glass slide as well. Uh, it should be narrow uh, than the glass slide. Its edge should be thin and uh, smooth uh, and should be polished uh, because uh, whenever it's not polished or it's not smooth, we are not getting a good peripheral smear. Uh, an excellent uh, spreader is the tough covered slip of new bar chamber uh, through which we are making very ideal slide of uh, the blood smear. So it's a very simple procedure and uh, the steps for this is first uh, place a small drop of the blood uh, in the center line of the slide uh, about about one centimeter from one end. Uh, then immediately place a spreader in front of the blood drop at uh, an angle of uh, 45 degree around move it back uh, so that it touches the drop of the blood. Blood will spread along the margin in contact uh, with the slide of the spreader by capillary action. Then push the spreader forward along the length of the slide by rapid smooth and straight movement. Uh, and then allow the film to dry in an air. This is a very simple technique. The first we are taking a blood drop uh, we are taking uh, the spreader, then we move back and uh, then we move forward and here we have a slide. So the characteristic of a good film uh, or good blood film is that uh, it cover at least half the length of the glass slide and uh, it should be narrow than the slide. Uh, it spread homogeneously and uh, it should not have any bubbles, uh, streak, uh, troughs or any holes and uh, it should be identifiable into head, body and tail. Uh, this area is near to the drop. Uh, here we have a lot of cells. Uh, it's not the best area. Then we have body, it's middle area and th then we have the tail, uh, thin terminal part and the best or ideal place for the morphology is here uh, near the tail. Uh, similarly it terminates into a smooth straight or slightly curved end and uh, it is a thin enough to yield at least uh, uh, 10 low power field where RBC do not overlap. Whenever we are looking overlapping so might be uh, that uh, we are not focusing the best area for uh, slide morphology. Now common defects and their uh, causes. So the first one is 
thick film result if blood drop is too large spreading is done too quickly or the angle of the spreader is too high so then we ultimately have a thick film uh, it's not good for morphology uh, the second one is very thin film and the thin film result if blood drop is too small its spreading has been too slow or angle of the spreader was too low and uh, the third one is gritty tail resulting if spreading has been too slow the, there was a delay in spreading uh, only a part of blood drop was uh, utilized or spreader was not appropriate and uh, in addition some anticoagulants other than EDTA and uh, high TLC also give rise to a, a gritty tail so that's all about the making a blood film and uh, in summarizing this lecture we know that we have two types of slides the one is cover sip slide which is not very common and the other one is glass slide this is very common and how we are making them what are the advantages and what are the disadvantages of a slide and which is the best area for the morphology uh, we uh, d differentiate the head tail and uh, uh, the body of a peripheral blood smear and uh, what are the common defects of the blood film so thank you very much for listening and other lecture we will uh, make a lecture on staining of blood film so see you soon inshallah thank you allah hafiz